privilege to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Amit Sara, for today's session. Very good afternoon to all of you. This is Dr. Manjusha Fandse working as project leader at Ancrom Enterprises Mumbai. This has been continuous lecture series by Ancrom, and thanks to all guest speakers who have been kind to provide their support and to host this lecture series. On behalf of Ancrom team, I welcome you all of you and our guest speaker for today, Dr. Amit Saraf from Ismail Yusuf College, <clears throat> Jogeshwari, Mumbai. For this another session, we are privileged to have him as one of the dynamic personalities from academic fraternity. He is the head of the Department of Botany and Biotechnology. Sir has qualified SET, NET, GATE, GRE and TOEFL examinations. He has vast experience of 19 years and his areas of expertise are phytochemistry, chemical fingerprinting of medicinal plants and HPTLC analysis. There are four research projects to his credit <clears throat> funded by UGC and BCUD, uh, uh, University of Mumbai. Besides this, he has published nine research papers in international journals. He is member of many government bodies like Homi Bhabha State University, Staff Selection Commission, Western Region, Mumbai, etc. With this note, I hand over the session to Dr. Amit Saraf. You can proceed with the session further, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manjusha, for the nice introduction. And uh, I'd like to share my screen. Yeah. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. Thank you, Ankita. Thank you, Manjusha. Uh, and uh, good afternoon to all the participants. Now, today we are here to discuss the basic strategies for phytochemical investigation using HPTLC. So since I'm working on it uh, and whatever time has been allotted to me, I think uh, we should just quickly go through uh, the instrumentation part and how to use it for uh, phytochemical investigation or phytochemical studies. So uh, okay, so uh, quick, uh, just I'll go through the introduction part and uh, basic instrumentations, instru instrumentation part. Basically, it is very important, you know, to uh, utilize the HPTLC instrumentation for effective separation of uh, phytochemicals. Okay, so as you all know, chromatography was uh, uh, first used on basically to separate phytochemicals, uh, that, uh, especially the plant pigments, uh, by Mikhail Sveth, who is also called as father of chromatography. Okay, so basically, chromatography, according to IUPAC, it is basically a me physical method of separation. Okay, in which components are separated? How they are separated? They're uh, uh, by the uh, they are basically distributed between two phases, okay? Uh, so a stationary phase and mobile phase, okay? So uh, mobile phase, so that is basically the uh, 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 base, basis of, you know, separation of phytochemicals. This is very, very essential. Uh, before we start HPTLC, you have to know that separation is basically between two components our uh, mobile phase and stationary phase. Okay, if you understand this, then uh, the uh, further investigation uh, becomes uh, a little bit easy. Okay, so <clears throat> again, a quick uh, uh, understanding the, again, the basic of, uh, basics of chromatography. The principle basically separation takes place on the basis of distribution of molecules between two phases as we have uh, uh, I just discussed, uh, which is also called as a partition coefficient, okay? So molecule in the mixture, whatever, uh, whenever uh, we extract any, we do any phytochemical extraction, whatever molecules that are phytomolecules that are present in mixture are applied to the surface, okay? Uh, and they are, uh, and when the station, uh, when the surface may be your solid or uh, stationary phase, depending on the type of chromatography you are utilizing, type of solvent system you are utilizing, it may be solid or fluid, okay? And they are separated by, uh, from each other by, uh, when the mobile phase is moving in one particular direction, okay? So separation of component is on the basis of interaction 
uh, with stationary phase and mobile phase. Okay, this I think with this we should begin with our uh, chromatographic chromatography basically. So this is a typical uh, your uh, HPTLC chromatographic system, it, uh, how it appears basically. So uh, you have a, a applicator, okay? Uh, then uh, you basically uh, go with uh, their uh, development and then uh, the documentation, okay? And all this entire process is linked by what is uh, by a uh, software, okay? So this is basically overview of uh, entire HPTLC instrumentation. So uh, in our college, basically, we have uh, this, uh, this is the overview of uh, whatever HPTLC instrument, instrumentation facility we have in our college. So for application uh, can also be done by uh, uh, in a semi-automatic way by using a Linomat 5, or it can be a fully automated, fully automated uh, application can be fully automated uh, utilizing automatic, uh, what we call as ATS or automatic TLC sampler, okay? Where even, uh, which is basically reduces the human error, okay? So while sampling, the rinsing, everything is done uh, automatically by using this technique by, by ATS4 and results are definitely better. Then development, development can be done uh, use, using a, uh, ADC2 automatic development chamber, uh, which can be coupled with uh, what is called as automated uh, method development chamber. Okay, so uh, now development chamber, the use, uh, uh, the basically the benefit of using ADC is that uh, the development takes place in more or less, you know, HPTLC basically is an open, uh, TLC is an uh, open system basically, which is, you know, uh, subjected to diff different physical uh, parameters, okay, like uh, uh, temperature, humidity and all. So here in ADC, the development happens in a closed system, okay. So gradually we are moving from open system to closed system, gradually, okay. Few steps are definitely, uh, uh, results are better because we are moving towards a closed system. So in ADC, uh, the development takes place in a very controlled environment. Here, uh, you control humidity, which is very crucial. Okay, And then uh, temperature is also, of course, uh, since uh, temperature can be maintained. So uh, then important process like uh, the time required for, required for chamber saturation. Okay, And uh, chamber saturation itself is very well maintained here. Even the development Okay, uh, when we say development or uh, the band should be developed till seven centimeter or eight centimeter following the ICH guideline, that can also be uh, very specifically maintained in uh, this uh, ADC. Now, AMD, AMD uh, is, has added one more, one more, you know, uh, uh, important, uh, uh, as far as development is con con concerned, it has added one more parameter to it, which will be discussed uh, in the later slide. Then documentation, of course, is done by visualizer and scanner. So <clears throat> in visualizer, the uh, uh, images are, are taken basically at uh, high definition. Images are taken at a different wavelength uh, in UV, long wave, short wave, and we have visible light also. And scanner, basically densitometer scanning is done, which is utilized uh, to uh, <clears throat> for quantitation studies also. Okay. Then uh, uh, after this uh, basic three, what you say, three st uh, process steps, application development and documentation, we can also go in for some, you know, advanced strategies where we can, uh, we can uh, extract several bands and we can, uh, the individual band can be subjected to uh, uh, hyphenated studies like uh, LCMS system, okay? So uh, this MS system gives you the uh, mass of that particular um, uh, analyte, uh, whatever uh, bands are separated. And uh, depending on that, we can also uh, uh, identify uh, depending on the mass, we can identify the separated compounds also. So this facility we have, and we are working and utilizing it. Uh, shortly, we are moving into in a bigger facility, uh, and uh, we'll be going for NEBL certification as well. Okay, 
So this is basically the advantage again, a, a theoretical part. So uh, what is the difference between TLC and HPTLC? How HPTLC is better? Uh, so if you consider all the process steps, application development, derivatization, and documentation, which is all basically more or less, you know, uh, 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 controlled and automated. Application is completely automated. Development is also is happening in closed chamber. Okay, derivatization also is uh, uh, done by a new technology. They are new. They have come up with new derivatizer, which gives excellent results. Okay, even documentation, of course, uh, is done using visualizer and uh, uh, scanner, basically. Okay, so uh, these all these four important steps are controlled in HPTLC. That's why we get a better result much better result than what we get in usual tlc if you have done your tlc you know that the rf already uh, differs from one step to another uh, the reproduci reproducibility is less because rf tends to rf tends to vary and uh, rf you know basically is a is a, a, a physical property just like density and the refractive index rf is supposed to be constant but in tlc regular tlc it, it always varies because we are not taking proper care uh, somewhere or the other, we do commit mistakes. Okay, so due to that error, RF value changes in TLC, but in HPTLC, uh, there is a high reproducibility because all the steps are properly are automated. Okay, so uh, basically, HTLC, which is is as I stated, is gradually moving from an open system to a closed system. Okay, to have a better result. So, so from uh, TLC uh, versus HPTLC, the image itself, you know, are, are, are explanatory, self-explanatory. Uh, that how uh, typical TLC appears. This is very good TLC if you are considering TLC. But what now, now? What you are observing is HPTLC, which is much improved. Okay, uh, and uh, these results are also reproducible. So, uh, how to when I say a uh, basic strategy, basically, okay. So how do we go about, okay? Uh, you have a plant sample and you have HPTLC instrumentation facility with you. So how do we begin with HPTLC uh, uh, studies, basically, I will call it, okay? So you have a plant powder, okay? Then these steps, basically, these steps are defined according to the ICH guidelines, okay? So uh, you have to prepare a methanolic extract because methanolic uh, give you maximum extractive value. If you compare, if you compare other solvents, okay, uh, like uh, uh, say uh, non-polar solvent, like uh, uh, depending on the polarity, you can have hexane, you can have a um, polar solvent uh, or ethanolic uh, uh, solvent. So methanol, uh, among all the this uh, uh, solvents, it has found to be with max uh, has a greater extractive value. So that is the reason why methanol was selected among all the solvents. Okay, so basic HPTLC procedure, it uh, uh, state, uh, which is stated um, ICH, I, according to ICH guidelines, herbal powder has to be dissolved uh, in methanol. Okay, one gram in 10 ml. Then you have to sonicate it for 15 minutes. So the bath sonicator, you can uh, sonicate it for 15 minutes. After that, uh, centrifuge it to get a, a very clear supernatant. Okay. So, uh, because uh, your uh, serine might get up clogged up if you are using uh, the, those solvent uh, directly. Okay, so centrifuge uh, uh, removes the turbidity, and what you get is a clear plant extract. Okay, so all the further analysis or the further analysis are done using same extract. Okay, as I told you uh, uh, before, the principle of uh, chromatic extraction is basically you you have the same extract but you are getting different different fingerprint okay so different uh, phytochemicals are separated because you will be using different solvent system okay so just on the basis of solvent system okay uh, the uh, different class of compound or different types of phytochemicals will be separated on the chromatogram Okay, on the chromatographic plate, different uh, phytochemicals will be separated just on the basis of the solvent system you are using. So uh, that is uh, that is one thing which you should remember. Okay, so uh, uh, this is what exactly we do in our lab. So this is actual photograph. Okay, so application uh, we uh, application is basically uh, done using ATS sample. 
So depending on your uh, plant sample, you can use uh, different uh, volumes uh, from varying from one mule to ten mule. Okay. So uh, generally, the loading is done in the form of band. Okay. Uh, and all the other parameter like nitrogen flow, everything can be controlled by uh, the software. Okay. So this is about all about application. Uh, so we prefer uh, ATS to Linomatic. So this is how basically the uh, this is ideal, you know, HPTLC plate. How 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 we are supposed to uh, this uh, follow? We we do follow uh, this particular uh, uh, parameters basically to uh, for application. Okay, so we leave uh, leaving. Uh, I think the as a plate suggest. We leave uh, two centimeter or twenty mm on both the side of the plate, and we leave fifteen track of eight mm. Okay, uh, the so this is how basically this is the standard pattern we follow for uh, development of HPTLC chromatogram. This is all about application. Now uh, development. Now development basically uh, here uh, I would like to you know. Uh, we are fortunate to have uh, both ADC and AMD, so we can utilize both the both the uh, instruments for very effective development of chromatograph. Okay, now this, uh, as I told you, it's a uh, it's a development that uh, for that particular plate HPTLC that happens in a closed system. Okay, and here humidity is controlled. Okay, then uh, here uh, even the the saturation uh, uh, time, everything is very much controlled here. That is why you will get you get excellent results. Okay, if I start doing this in a, a regular regular uh, HPTLC tank, okay, so moment uh, the basically the uh, time duration is not uh, correctly followed. We do commit some uh, some uh, some even a few minutes here and there can you know can lead to the. Uh, develop uh, can affect your development of chromatogram. Then uh, next thing is uh, humidity is not controlled if you are using open tank. But here these things are you know taken care of. Then third important thing is the time, the uh, distance. Okay, distance to, uh, which at which the your uh, solvent should run. That is also very very effectively and uh, uh, precisely decided by this uh, automatic development chamber. Okay, so that again is a very important parameter. The length to which your solvent should run, okay, is also decided by this particular ADC. So otherwise, you have to manually see till what time it is rising. Okay, or what the usual practice is we mark uh, somewhere uh, uh, the exact distance till which you want to run your sample. Then you have to caref be careful, carefully watch the development. And as soon as it reaches that point, then you have to remove the chromatogram so this thing has to be done manually where you can or you may go wrong okay but this thing is taken care of uh, precisely in uh, at this uh, adc hence the results are excellent now here what uh, one more thing okay uh, uh, one more parameter as i discussed earlier which which was added here is basically this amd now in amd uh, it uh, the generally the development is isocratic okay where the mobile phase or uh, of or solvent system of phase composition is used throughout the development process okay so entire entire uh, chromatogram is developed in a uh, in a very uh, fixed kind of solvent system okay or single solvent system so that is called as isocratic type of development but amd offers me a, a gradient development also uh, which 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 uh, the step wise or fractional gradient development also uh, is possible using this particular device so amd basically is connected to adc okay and as you see here five bottles are hanging with five different uh, solvents which can be which can which can be you know i can decide basically we can decide which uh, the composition of solvent system okay and also the time for which uh, so these those so, so the solvent system basically which are fed into adc are decided by the amd okay so amd will decide that uh, say for example x solvent system 
with uh, uh, should uh, uh, should be should uh, the development should start in X solvent system. Okay, so that solvent system will be fed in the ADC chamber. Okay, so uh, say for example, I am I have decided that I will be running my chromatogram for uh, seven centimeter or 700, uh, 770 uh, mm. So I can also decide that after 1.5 mm or after or, or, or after 20 mm, this sol solvent system should be taken off and another set of solvent system should be introduced. So this is possible by using what is called as AMD. Okay, so after, say for example, after my uh, bands are separated till two, uh, 20 mm, then that particular solvent system will be taken off Okay, a new solvent system will be introduced. Okay, so I can change the mobile phase during the course of development. Okay, so uh, this stepwise change in the mobile phase during the course of development is called as gradient development. Okay, uh, if you basically the extract which we are using here is same. In extract there are many, now see basically how the um, Phytochemical chemical investigation runs is say for example a plant a typical plant you are uh, targeting that at, at any point of time it has uh, say for example it has uh, four, 400 to 500 different chemical phytochemicals so when you are preparing extract so out of those 400 to 500 chemicals uh, more than 50 percent are extracted okay if you are using methanol methanol has good uh, uh, solubility so also it depending on the uh, plant 50 to 80 percent those uh, phytochemicals are extracted so your solvent number of extract you know number of phytochemical uh, are uh, um, basically uh, a limited number of phytochemicals are dissolved now your sol your extract has many phytochemicals okay so uh, ranging from uh, and the uh, those sol those uh, phytochemicals are dissolved in those solvents and solvents are categorized on the basis of their polarity so you have a uh, polar solvent like water and uh, and it has a complete polarity scale uh, uh, then uh, it uh, and on the other side of uh, polar extracts are non polar extracts uh, say for example like uh, hexane okay toluene they are non polar extract okay and you have a mid polar extract like methanol Okay, pet ether. So, depending on their polarity, the solubility of a uh, phytochemical differs. Okay, it is uh, one uh, basic principle for chromatic uh, this uh, uh, extraction procedure is like dissolves like. Like dissolves like means say for example a phytochemical is a uh, polar, so it will be dissolved or it will be soluble in polar solvent. Okay, if the phytochemical is highly is is non-polar. So it will only dissolve in non-polar solvent. Okay, so so depending on the polarity, the uh, phytochemicals are separated. So in methanol, uh, maximum amount of uh, those uh, it had a high. So it, since it has highest extractive value, maximum amount of uh, phytochemicals are separated. After separation, okay. Now after separation, so say for example, your extract has a mix of polar solvent, non-polar solvent, and mid-polar solvent. So what happens is if you are using isocratic development, so you are you are using one particular solvent system. That solvent system may target selectively polar solvent or non-polar solvent. Okay. So uh, what the if you have a same sol solvent system, so a similar kind of one kind of solvents or one kind of you know phytochemicals will be separated but if you are following gradient type of development you can target polar non-polar and mid-polar uh, mid uh, phytochemicals at the in the same chromatogram okay so which gives you the better separation which gives you better separation uh, uh, and uh, so this amd gives you a chance to have a, a, a gradient development okay it, uh, as opposed to isocratic development. Uh, this has to be utilized basically, you know, this that AMD has to be utilized in a better way for uh, getting better phytochemical separation. Now, derivatization is also one uh, uh, important aspect. Uh, we used to, uh, previously we used to dip our chromatogram in, um, in, the, in, the, in the derivatizing agent, but here the derivatizing agent, okay, it is sprayed in form of, a, a, it is nebulized basically and it's spread in form of aerosol okay 
so a derivatization basically you know it uh, the function remains the same that uh, it highlights the uh, many bands are invisible in color invisible basically uh, then uh, after treating with derivatizing agent uh, they form a colored complex and they also become visible so the visibility of phytochemical is enhanced if you derivatize it with particular um, derivatizing agent say for example if you are using a uh, alkaloid so uh, say if you are using wagner or uh, this reagent all the alkaloids form a colored bound or this uh, complex so they they are uh, visible so that is how basically the derivatization works okay it uh, helps you in the detection of colorless compounds and this is done by uh, a new derivatizer which uh, which is which gives better result then is uh, visualization whatever uh, band servings that uh, that are separated they are um, the image is captured basically uh, at short wavelength long wavelength and visible light okay so uh, uh, this uh, then whatever results that are generated basically uh, one you know i have heard a few objections that you know uh, the bands in the hptlc are manipulated and all so but whatever uh, Uh, software that has been used in this particular uh, TLC, uh, uh, this um, uh, by Chemac, basically they are you know uh, uh, in tune with the uh, internet or uh, this uh, uh, this IQ. They follow the IQ OQ qualification, uh, which means that result generated I cannot be manipulated. Okay, and that is the reason they are universally accepted. So visualization, visualization is basically taking image at various wavelength. okay generally the wavelength that are used for image capturing is uh, uh, this 254 nanometer 360 nanometer and 540 nanometer so this is the basically a uh, visual visualization of a uh, same fingerprint under a different light okay so different light uh, different phytochemicals are visible basically that is the reason what we use a uh, um, uh, long wave uh, short uh, long or uh, short wave uh, uv light long wave uv light and visible light this uh, when you use a uh, short wave uv light which is basically you know uh, invisible to our eye so the a special uh, fluorescent dye is a uh, use in uh, while making dlc plate which uh, shows fluorescence at 254 and that is how we can observe some uh, phytochemicals on in that particular uh, of wavelength okay which are which basically these are the phytochemicals that shows high absorption at uh, of uv light okay so those phytochemicals which are absorbing uh, short wave lights are highlighted at uh, in this particular image which is taken at 540 nanometer then long wave uv light okay uh, gives better result basically many phytochemicals they show absorption at 360 nanometer and a beautiful lit up image can be observed uh, good fluorescence is observed basically at 360 nanometer and white light is visible light uh, where uh, where uh, colored components are uh, also very clearly seen so this is how basically the visualization is done then uh, this is a densitometer uh, scanning okay so here uh, the density okay uh, uh, densitometer scan basically uh, is it evaluates intensity of uh, that particular band and depending on this uh, quantitative evaluation can be done so this is very important as far as hptlc uh, studies are concerned so this is how uh, this is uh, classic literature available on their website also uh, how the densitometer scan is done and we uh, the result is expressed in this form okay so you can see uh, the depending on the density uh, different uh, uh, of particular uh, phytochemical you can um, uh, this even the slope and all is generated by uh, the software hence there are no chances of uh, manipulation or uh, uh, so that's why they are you know and uh, this entire process is done as per as per the icsh guidelines and hence they are uh, universally accepted basically now uh, before starting with uh, this uh, phytochemical analysis okay uh, hptlc analysis what is important is to understand this particular concept that solvent system depending basically solvent system decides the separation of phytochemicals 
okay so uh, before you uh, i have already given how to extract basically how to do the extract okay so after extraction next important thing is choose or ch choosing a right solvent system okay because the entire se separation depends on the correct solvent system okay like i said like dissolves like so if you are targeting a, some particular compound say for example particular class of compound so you have to go through the literature and uh, and select proper solvent system which will target only those class of compound or those typical type of those phytochemicals okay so plate remains the same extract remains the same what varies is solvent system and what you see is different type of chemicals being separated okay so it is all what is important is the solvent system once you understand the instrumentation process yeah you know how to extract yeah then about studies basically you know how to utilize this spdlc system is by understanding solvent system role of solvent system is very 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 important okay and your entire studies hptlc studies depend on choosing correct solvent system for that i will uh, uh, refer few standard books like you go through wagner you go through uh, harbon you go to uh, i krish these all these uh, these are listed on uh, uh, ncrom website also i think you should go through the uh, basics of uh, understanding solvent system before you start your hptlc studies okay so this is very important then uh, what should be the basic strategy okay if you are beginning with hptlc uh, evaluation okay so basics uh, these are three basic studies or three basic uh, parameters on which we the, the most of the herbals are evaluated so phytochemical investigation is basically uh, or uh, revolves around initially these three types three parameters first is hptlc fingerprint so what exactly is fingerprint fingerprint is what a characteristic patterns of phytochemicals that are which are separated under that given condition okay so given condition here is given condition is how uh, uh, so uh, given condition basically means uh, what kind of uh, how are you Uh, again, uh, your applicator. How are you using your applicator? Uh, how much volume you have applied? Okay. What uh, uh, till what time you are developing it? Then uh, most important is which is the which is the solvent system. So if the if for that particular solvent system, okay, whatever uh, pattern of bands you are getting, okay, that is supposed to stay constant. That is supposed to stay constant. okay so that is what is that is what is what is called as fingerprint fingerprint has to be constant under the given condition what is fingerprint it is a characteristic pattern of bands of phytochemicals that are separated under given condition as i told you rf rf of that particular phytochemical is a physical parameter it cannot change if it is changing it is because of some error okay so uh, basically if you follow the technique properly the uh, you will get a same kind of uh, a similar result and similar type of uh, a characteristic pattern of bands can be observed so that is called as fingerprint okay so for fingerprint uh, you need a maximum separation so i uh, i'll suggest uh, uh, you go for uh, gradient development also or give it a try you will get very good you will get very good separation if you use gradient development then second type of study is class of compound now what are class of compounds class of compounds are basically if you see phytochemicals so how do you define those phytochemicals phytochemicals are basically uh, primary metabolites but most of them are what is what are called as secondary metabolites which are synthesized from primary metabolites okay now medicinal property of plant is basically because of this composition of secondary metabolites so secondary there there exists different classes of secondary metabolites of flavonoids okay uh, alkaloids okay so 
all different classes uh, of uh, this uh, uh, secondary metabolites can be separated or can be targeted by choosing specific solvent system okay so if you vary the solvent system a different class of compound okay will be separate so again extract is same but just by changing the solvent system you can have different classes of secondary metabolites separating on the chromatogram okay so second is uh, class of compounds basically uh, if you go through literature uh, on even on the uh, enchrom website you can find out that uh, they uh, 15 at least 15 class of secondary metabolites can be separated and they uh, can be effectively separated what i can say is okay so you can have different types of secondary metabolites also uh, um, uh, separated from the same extract now that type of studies are called as class of compounds separation of class of compound so you have fingerprint analysis which is a characteristic pattern under that particular given condition which where we target uh, that the uh, more band should be separated and the uh, and the band should be uh, properly separated they should not be a diffused band okay in class of compound we are targeting only particular class of secondary metabolites okay uh, so these are these two are typical fingerprint studies third is method validation okay method validation means basically whether your method whatever studies you have done whether they are again they have high rate of reproducibility they will have high rate of reproducibility if their validation is done according to ICH guidelines okay so we'll discuss it in the uh, next slide so basically these three are the basic studies okay or uh, if you want to target any phytochem uh, uh, any plant or any herbal product so your study should initially evolve around evolve uh, revolve around these three parameters first is getting one fingerprint okay which will define that particular plant then you target different secondary metabolites okay so before targeting secondary metabolites you should you can do a preliminary studies uh, 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 of qualitative studies basically to decide whether that particular class of compound exists or not okay so, uh, so if you are targeting alkylate so you first perform alkyl test for alkylate if it is if you are uh, targeting flavonoid okay glycoside or some other uh, uh, terpenoids or sterols so you first find out whether those those class of compounds are present in that sample in the extract or not so how can you do that you can do, do do that by preliminary uh, uh, by any qualitative test which are mentioned in literature okay once you are sure yeah this particular uh, plant is showing this particular class of compound then you can target that particular compound in the extract and by using suitable solvent system you can separate those class of compound if uh, steroid is totally absent then there is no point in developing fingerprint for steroid you are not going to get any 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 phytochemical separate because there are no steroids there okay so depending on the uh, secondary metabolite first you have to uh, do the uh, qualitative test and then go ahead with the uh, this particular fingerprint development for uh, that particular class of compound so method validation is done according to ICH guideline which i'll discuss in the uh, next slide okay so the uh, method validation basically ensures the universality or, or, or repeatability or reproducibility of result Okay, so these three are the basic strategy for um, phytochemical analysis. Okay, so fingerprint, class of compound, and validation. Now, basically, fingerprint, as I told you, it is a herbal extract is separated into several bands called as fingerprint. Then, what do you do with that fingerprint? It is you have to document it at uh, these uh, uh, different wavelengths: five, uh, short wave, long wave UV, and visible light. Okay, uh, if the visibility of band is enhanced by derivatization, if needed, if the bands are not visible, so uh, you we perform derivatization. Uh, sometimes derivatization good, uh, many a time derivative general derivatization good gives good result. Sometimes uh, uh, derivatization is not needed, so it depends basically. Okay, so you have to uh, document it before derivatization and after derivatization to get a comparative uh, result basically. Now, uh, separated bands are identified by their position. Okay, uh, position basically here I mean RF. So separated the band, as I told you, RF should should 
ideally be always constant okay because it's a this physical value okay it's a physical value just like density or R ri it is a rf is also a, 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 a physical property and it is supposed to be constant now uh, when when the uh, this entire thing is uh, visualized at different wavelength as i told you so fingerprint basically is what a characteristic pattern so pattern of bands so this you should remember this is the first study which you do uh, when you are evaluating any herbal so this is a typical uh, fingerprint uh, which we have done uh, so here uh, when i say the characteristic pattern of band under given condition so what are the condition so these are the condition okay sample application then uh, during uh, uh, applicator what conditions are used then and during development which solvent system was used uh, derivatization was done under which uh, uh, reagent and visualization or doc documentation is done at what what wavelength so when you divide these uh, uh, parameters i should always get similar kind of result so that is called as fingerprint okay so uh, solvent system basically you know good separation uh, it decides the good separation of phyto constant if i change the solvent system the banding bands will also the pattern will also change Okay, so this uh, fingerprint when is subjected to uh, densitometer scanning, I get the densitogram. Okay, and I uh, do uh, after densitogram, I I can always I, I'll get the table for each and every peak. So each and every peak here uh, is uh, uh, what 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 RF and what area is there that is given after the densitometer scanning. So densitometer scanning basically gives you figures. Okay, it gives you figures. Or which can be compared okay and depending on area and all we can find out the uh, we can quantify that particular uh, phyto constituent so this is about uh, this is one more fingerprint which we have developed okay in our lab okay so this is basically you know uh, we have taken uh, same same plant, but we have taken uh, we have prepared extract by a different way. Okay, uh, so this was prepared uh, using uh, uh, methanol and uh, same this and uh, okay. So this particular fing uh, fingerprint analysis was done by using different kind of extract from the same plant. Okay. Now this is also one more strategy you can uh, apply here. So when you are using different type of extracts, some are hot extract, some are cold extract. Okay. So if it is hot extract, then more heat uh, heat level compound uh, uh, heat level compound are not likely to be uh, uh, resolved. Okay. So if it is cold extract, then all uh, heat level means the, those compound which will decompose basically. Okay. Which uh, which will be deactivated or decompose uh, 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 when heated. So such compounds are lost when you are preparing hot extract, and when you are preparing cold extract, uh, uh, you can uh, you also can separate those typical those uh, compound which might decompose uh, or which cannot withstand heat. Okay, and uh, uh, hot extract also basically you know uh, since we raise the temperature, the solubility okay increases. So whatever phytochemical compound which are heat, uh, which are uh, uh, means which can survive the heat, but the extraction is basically their extraction is definitely more than the cold cold extract. Okay, if a compound is not affected by heat, okay, in cold extract it will be extracted. Okay, but in hot extract it will be extracted in more amount. So you can very clearly see in uh, here that uh, these bands are you know uh, more intense because there they have. Uh, in hot extract, they are extracted in more amount. So this also is one more technique which is employed in uh, uh, during uh, this uh, fingerprint studies. Now class of compounds. Now class of compound basically uh, uh, it depends. You have to choose ideal solvent system and derivatization. Okay, uh, uh, you have to know which is the target molecule. And depending on the target molecule, you choose solvent system and derivatization. Okay, it uh, gives you uh, this class of comp during class of compound. If you have a uh, standard with you, okay, you can uh, not only detect but you can also quantify the secondary metabolites. Okay, as I told you, fifteen uh, class of compounds can be detected from the same extract based on the uh, specific solvent system. 
Now, a separated zone can be detected by physical or chemical method, which I'll discuss later. The amount and uh, the, qual uh, the quality of information obtained can be further increased using hyphenated technique. I I'll discuss that. What are hyphenated technique? Hyphenated technique basically is amalgamation of uh, two different instrumentation facilities, two, two different instruments. Okay, uh, like uh, we have used here LCMS. Okay, so uh, I'll discuss in next slide how that LCMS can be used for, to uh, identify uh, or uh, characterize that particular band of uh, band of your uh, this fingerprint. So in HPLC class of compound, basically different secondary metabolites are uh, separated on the basis of solvent system and derivatization. This is the typical fingerprint of sterols and sterols, uh, terpenoids and phenolics. So all th these uh, are developed from same plant extract. Okay, so same plant extract, uh, you will see different types of uh, binds here because I have used different types of solvent system. Then validation. Basically. The validation method validation is done as per the, as I told you as per the ICH guideline. So these are the different parameters: linearity, precision, robustness, specificity, recovery, detection limit, quantitation limit. On the basis of this, the method validation is done. Okay. Now method validation basically uh, provides reproducible results. Okay. If your method is validated, then it is then only it is accepted basically. If you are uh, sending your paper uh, this for uh, in a good uh, journals, so they generally ask for whether you have validated your, your method or not. If it is validated, then it is accepted basically. So these are these are the hyphenated technique which I was talking about. So after basic studies, okay, you should always uh, look for some what what next. So what next is this kind of study hyphenated technique where HPDLC chromatogram is uh, subjected. Okay, the individual bands okay can be it can be uh, uh, can be cut out from the chromatogram and they are subjected to structural evaluation of that particular separated phytochemical. Okay, so hyphenated technique basically uh, are benefits of two techniques. Here HPDLC is been connected with some other some other uh, um, uh, what you say analytical instruments. Okay, so I cannot go uh, if with the extract. I cannot directly go for NMR study. Why? Because they require uh, isolated the pure compound. So how pure compounds are separated? They are separated on the chromatogram, and individual bands have been sucked out by in, uh, by this uh, this uh, interface. And that uh, that particular band is uh, uh, is has high purity. Okay, and since it has purity, it can be sent for the further uh, studies for. Uh, structural, uh, what you say, uh, elucidation of that particular uh, band or that particular compound. So this is, uh, again, you can look forward towards uh, this uh, hyphenated technique. Another another type of uh, studies which can be, you know, uh, which can be done uh, is uh, uh, bioactivity studies. Okay, so whatever uh, phytochemicals, okay, which are separated on the chromatogram, okay, uh, say for example, uh, you know that uh, you can uh, have uh, alkaloid separated, okay, so uh, say for example, I'm getting five different types of alkaloids, okay, uh, five, type, uh, uh, five typical bands of alkaloids on my chromatogram, so I can find out there, uh, I can find out the bioactivity of individual separate compound on the, on the set plate, itself okay so these are called as in this is basically a uh, in situ analysis of separated compound and uh, after the basic of uh, this um, i think we are running short of time but you can also uh, do these kind of antimicrobial studies antioxidant studies using dpph toxicity study uh, on the chromatogram itself okay so these tests can be done on the uh, this 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 also basically is a uh, 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 this uh, uh, one, uh, what you say, uh, this uh, HPTLC studies can be also um, applied for studying different uh, bioactivities. Okay, in situ bioactivity. So I think uh, with this, uh, I would like to end my session here and uh, like to throw open the session for uh, question answers. So we can, of course, 
we have some time. Ten, uh, we have still ten minutes left in the session, and uh, I think the session is open for uh, question answers. So I think we can take a few questions definitely. And if there are more questions, we can uh, reply them via mail. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so thank you, sir. So participants who would like to ask the questions, they can raise their hands and I can allow you to unmute yourself and then you can ask the question live or else you can put it in the chat box or Q&A box. Yes, Mangesh, sir, I have given you the permission. Please unmute yourself. Uh, I would like to ask, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, Saraf, sir, for a wonderful and informative lecture. Thank and you. I would like to one thing that uh, regarding the amino acid, uh, mm. for the amino acid, uh, can we follow the RF value which is given in the some reference book, or that we have to run the uh, that amino acid along with our sample? Because I have done it in that manner. Okay. Uh, regarding amino acids. Yes, 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 sir. Yeah. So, uh, what have you done, sir? Uh, I have done so only the separation of amino acid in my plant sample. Okay. So ha have you used any uh, standard and have you? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I have, so done, did you... I have uh, done it from this ANCOMAL. Okay, okay. okay. So but I think uh... I have faced such a problem. Hmm. But after that, they resolve my problem. Okay. So what exactly do you want to, is your question, sir? Uh, so. uh, I want to ask that uh, in certain reference book, uh, the RF value for that particular amino acid is mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, whenever we run that uh, amino acid, that plant sample for the amino acid, mm -hmm. so that do not uh, match with that uh, RF value. So for that, we have run this sample and that particular amino acid also, and then compare that band. Okay, so uh, basically the problem with sir uh, chromatography is that you have to look at those parameters carefully. Okay, yes, yes. first thing, yeah, first thing is extraction, sir. Whether our extraction is in tune is or as mentioned in the literature. So yes. RF is a physical value which is supposed to be same, and if it is, we are not getting it. It means we are going wrong somewhere. Okay, Dr. Manjusha would like to add to it. Yes. Okay. Uh, Manjusha, ma'am. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Would you like Ang to add add to this? Angita, I have lost the connection in between, but what I have understood from this question is there are many mobile phases for analysis of amino acids, but you will have to use same mobile phase and same chromatographic condition. Then only you can compare and go for identification. Otherwise, you want to go for your method, you will have to apply standards for the same. Uh, Madam, uh, we have also followed that same salon system. Sorry, I, I, your voice is breaking. I, I sir. use the same salon system there that I mentioned in the that reference book and okay. uh, the RF value that is mentioned in the reference book also. Okay. But sometimes that is not match with that RF value. And How I, much difference is there, sir, between the RF values which are reported and the one which you have got? Number of the many differences are there, but for that we have run this standard amino acid. Okay. Uh, we have to run these plant samples along with the standard amino acid and then compare if there is a presence or not. Okay, then if you are applying standard, then it's not a problem, sir. You can, if they are matching with your standard, that means that particular amino acid is present in your sample. Yes, yes, yes. We, we use that system, uh, okay. then we get... Uh, that, that is perfect, sir. That is correct way to go ahead uh, for the analysis of amino acid. But many, but not a problem. Many times us that uh, you compare that particular RF value with that standard mentioned in certain reference book or all these things. So no, no, sir, if you do not have any idea about what mobile phase or what chromatographic conditions are to be used, in that case, you can go. But as you are saying, you have developed the method for yes. the same, you have applied standard as well as sample. 
and you are getting correlation between standard and sample then yeah. uh, that is okay you can uh, go ahead with the uh, comparison and identification if okay. rf value if suppose you have got uh, rf value for say for example lysine which is coming at rf 0.40 and at same rf you are getting uh, band for your sample as well then you can uh, go for confirm identification that yes lysine is present in my sample as well Okay, but we can do something for that. I think uh, by using this for additional okay. confirmation, you can yes, go yes. for MS studies, sir. You can subject okay. your sample to mass analyzer, and you can go go for identification. Okay. And another question, query I have mentioned that uh, the area the, of that particular peak, how okay. we can quantify that uh, particular compound? Yes. Okay. so what you will have there are two methods sir <clears throat> the one which we follow i will explain we prepare same concentration of that standard for example suppose i have taken curcumin i will prepare a concentration of say for example 1 mg per ml or 10 mg per ml as per my requirement and i will apply different volumes of the same concentration suppose i have 1 mg per 1 ml curcumin standard is there with me i will apply different levels of standard starting from 1 microliter to 7 microliter and along with that i will apply my samples then in the software in Win, uh, wincats and vision cats <clears throat> both there are options uh, especially in vision cats there is option of definition under which you can put the values of how much standard you have you are you have applied for the standard and sample and the volumes will be there in the software itself go on uh, the software will plot calibration graph for you and under results you can see uh, what uh, how much amount of standard is present in your sample okay mane i am i am asking about the result that we obtained in the sptlc when we done in that Uh, there is a we got the RF value uh, A and start and all the maximum and okay. after that there is a area okay yes so that area indicate what because many times so many person ask me that question okay area is sir how much response you have got for that particular standard or sample suppose you are you are working say for example curcumin or gallic acid. you have uh, 1 mg per 1 ml uh, gallic acid standard and you have applied 2 microliter of gallic acid then you have got some peak and area under the peak that means how much response or how much absorbance it is showing for that gallic acid that value it will show and accordingly it will go for the calibration or you can go for quantification based on the area which you have obtained Means if there is a more area that indicate there is a more. That means yes, it is present in more quantity. Okay, okay thank you, ma'am. That you will have to optimize if you are going for proper calibration. It, it is not the case that in first plate itself you will get result. First, you will have to check the area response of standard and samples, and accordingly you will have to dilute or you will have to increase the concentration, and then you can go for cal plotting calibration graph. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anna. And if your compound does show a response in absorbance, you are yes. supposed to go for quantification in absorbance mode. And if your compound is showing fluorescence, uh, in that case, you are supposed to go for peak height, not peak area. Okay. uh next question please uh, so sir we have one question in chat box from devyani agarwal uh, devyani ma'am if you can raise your hand and you can directly uh, ask the question and also vikas i am allow yes ma'am i am allowing you to talk please ma'am go ahead devyani agarwal ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am please ask a, a question yeah yes sure. ma'am yes ma'am 
Ma'am, I want to ask that once we have prepared one extract and from that we were removing tenants, so we have added PVP to that. And after performing uh, also removal of that, uh, means after performing HPLT, HPTLC, we got an improper result. So it was because of PVP used, because of the inter interference caused due to PVP or any other reason for that, sir? Uh, Ma'am, what is P PVP? Can you elaborate? Polyvinyl pyrolidon. For what? For what purpose you have added it? Uh, for removing tannins from our extract. Okay, is it organic or inorganic in nature? It is organic. It is organic. Inorganic. Inorganic. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Inorganic. Sure, na. So if it is inorganic, it should not interfere with the result. There could be some other reason. What problem you are facing exactly? Uh, means actually when we added the proper band was not uh, seen. Uh, means uh, with doing the same experiment we have done, we got a proper result of a good band, but uh, we want to remove the tenants from it. So we have added to that, then a proper band was not observed. Okay, after addition of PVP. Yes, ma'am. Uh, PVP should not cause any problem because it is inorganic in nature and inorganic compounds are not separated in TLC or HPTLC. There could be some other problem. Can you send your details on lab at the rate anchrom.in of your okay. analysis if you if you are okay with that? How okay. you have prepared the sample? What what uh, what is your uh, exact aim of analysis? For what separation you are looking for, ma'am? For what compounds? Ma'am, uh, actually, I cannot say that, but uh, uh, I will ask to that and I will send to you on that. Okay, okay, no problem, ma'am. And ma'am, second question was that using HPTLC, uh, we are using herbal extract. So after filtering also some way, if, if our syringe uh, has got clogged, so any options or technique, you can help us out with that. We can remove it. What? Okay. okay what, solvent, what solvent you are using for rinsing the syringe? Methanol. Methanol. Okay. And what uh, uh, what you can do is instead of methanol, you can try solvents of different polarity. Say, for example, acetone, methanol or uh, methanol, ethanol or 70% ethanol. If you have applied oil samples, you can use hexane for the rinsing of the syringe. It depends how, what type of samples you have used for application. Uh, so you can try different solvents of varying polarity and then you can check. Okay. Okay. Other than that, ma'am, because we have tried. Sometimes many just solvent. methanol is not so sufficient, ma'am. You if uh, if you have applied oil samples, then you need any non-polar oh, solvent we have which tried can the remove other solvent oil. also. Okay. Also by sonification, by adding the solvent and using sonif. Uh, uh, I will consult with our service engineers in that case and we'll let you know. You can share your problem on lab at the rate ancrum.in, ma'am. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Yes. You are from which college, ma'am? LM College of Pharmacy. Okay, LM College of Pharmacy. Okay. Thank you. So we have more questions in the QA box. Mm, yes, we can go ahead, Ankita. Okay. I think there is question from Mr. Nandakumar Ji. Okay, I'm using WinCat software for scanning. I can choose only one wavelength. I tend to use either 254 or 366 nanometer as it helps relate to chromatogram development better. Is that okay? Or should I stick to any particular wavelength? Okay. So the answer to this question is... <clears throat> Uh, if you uh, if you are aware what sample or what standard you are using for your analysis, suppose if you are using standard like umbelliferon, then which has uh, uh, intense fluorescence, then in that case you can select wavelength 366. If you are using compound like caffeine, which shows uh, its uh, lambda max at 272 or 273, that you can use because it will show maximum area at that particular wavelength. It depends on what is the aim of your analysis, what type of analysis you want to go further. For general profiling 254 or 366, and if it is showing some response in visible light, then you can scan your plate at 540 or 580 nanometer.
for general uh, profiling as you have mentioned 254 366 540 and if you are going for derivatization after derivatization as well you are supposed to scan your plate either at 540 or 580 that depends so i think sir i have answered your query So, ma'am, if uh, so, sir, if we have uh, more time, we can take up the Q and A, or we can end the session. There are four uh, questions uh, in the Q and A box. Mm, let me check. So, okay. uh, regarding the cost of the entire system, please uh, contact. Yes, they can send yeah. the mail at yeah. lab at the rate ancrum dot in. We will uh, uh, communicate with our sales people, and they will let you know. If we want to do HPTLC for polyherbal formulation, is it necessary? Okay. Uh, standards. If you are target, if you are doing any fingerprint studies, basically, so standards are not required. If you want to isolate or uh, uh, characterize or uh, det uh, detect some particular class of compound, then uh, standards are, are required, basically. Uh, madam would you like to add to it uh, no sir i think you have answered correctly <laughs> okay that should be yeah. sufficient how can we extract uh, the separated separated sample like in aj after cutting the desired band we use agar is to dissolve the gel and we get separated sample energy now here uh, you can uh, it is uh, pretty basically easy to extract the sample if you are um, I'll suggest you go for a preparative analysis, wherein instead of saying we plot a long band of particular fighter, that particular sample, and we get more amount of phytochemical separated, then you can either you can, if you do not have interface, you can scrape off that particular plate and that particular band and dissolve it in the uh, methanol since you have prepared the if, uh, or, or, or dissolve the that particular uh, scrapped t t uh, silica gel in the solvent and uh, again uh, do the cent centrifuge to get a clear uh, solution and you can you know, proceed with the further analysis. So it is very much possible and basically it is uh, done very often. You can extract the separated bands very easy from a TLC plate. So yes, it is possible. Sir, we have one more question. Please, can you tell more about anti antimicrobial, antimicrobial and antioxidant and studies? Okay. So uh, basically antimicrobial studies and antioxidant studies depend on uh, uh, and for ex antioxidant studies, I can tell you, uh, if you prepare, a, if you, once the bands are separated, you can dip the entire plate, okay, entire plate in DPPH solution, reagent, DPP reagent has to be prepared, uh, and this entire procedure is uh, generally carried out in dark because it, DPPH uh, is light sensitive, so when you expose the entire chromatogram with separated bands in the DPPH, okay, the end, then you can view the uh, activity okay you can very cl very clearly see the uh, the reaction and uh, those uh, separated uh, bands if uh, of phyto uh, phytochemicals so whichever phytochemical is giving you uh, uh, best activity which, which it, it can be very very clearly observed on the plate on the chromatogram itself okay uh, so that is how we go about, go ahead with uh, we do basically antioxidant studies of separated bands. So individual band can be can be uh, the activity can be studied in uh, in one go basically. And regarding antimicrobial studies, so uh, you have to first you know uh, culture or uh, those uh, some uh, some uh, your whatever antimicrobial uh, uh, basically the culture of whatever bacteria. 
okay, which you are uh, uh, targeting basically. So once you have a pure culture of those bacteria, you can uh, uh, you can dip your plate, dip dip the plate basically uh, in the in the uh, in the media itself. And uh, depending on the anti antimicrobial activity of that particular separated compound, you will get different zone of inhibition. So by observing the zone, you can study the antimicrobial activity of each and every separated compound. So here, uh, HPTLC offers you basically a chance to study in situ bioactivity. It means all the separated molecule, the bio, their bioactivity can be studied in at one go in one glance. Okay. Of course, there are various uh, um, uh, uh, this uh, steps and procedures which you have to follow. And uh, I think uh, uh, you can just drop in a mail. We can definitely provide with uh, uh, the necessary help and uh, necessary literature and uh, um, uh, regarding how we perform antimicrobial and antioxidant studies on the HPTLC chromatogram. Madam, would you like to add to this? No, sir. I think uh, you have answered elaborately. Okay. Uh, selection, uh, the reagent which you are using for the antimicrobial activity, it will depend on what type of microbes you are you choosing for the analysis. So in the, if you uh, go for the literature survey, there are various reagents available which are used for the identification of that particular pathogen or the uh, uh, microbe. So that you have to select accordingly. Uh, we have one more question, sir. If there is no specific no. standard mm -hmm. available for confirmation of extracted compound, and, and if it is not available is in the data library also, what is the alternative for confirmation other than the RF value reported? So I think if uh, no st as when the no specific standard is available, okay, and in uh, data library also it is not available, then uh, you have a very there is a very good chance that you have extracted some unknown compound, then I think you should uh, go for PrEP uh, HPTLC and try to find, uh, uh, go ahead with the structural elucidation and uh, studies. That is what uh, we are basically uh, doing. So the bands which are not present, not available in the data library, so that gives you a good chance basically to go for further studies, further hyphenated studies for structural evaluation. Yes, sir. As you have rightly mentioned, they you will have they will have to send their samples to mass analyzer for to single quadruple or triple quadruple, and accordingly they will have to do further studies. With they once they will get M by Z ratio, they will get an idea of what is the molecular weight, and in in some cases they might have to go to other characterization studies as well, and after that they can identify what is that standard. So that is good. Basically, if you are getting some uh, unreported compound, so you have a, you know, uh, it uh, basically it gives you a, a opportunity to find out some new molecule or report a new molecule in that particular compound, in that particular extract. Uh, yes, I think uh, after mass, uh, you can also go for NMR, NMR studies. Yes, depending on if you if uh, the after finding out mass and if you go through some literature and if you are not able to still uh, uh, you know uh, decide about the structure of that particular compound, uh, you can go for you should go for NMR. I think after mass studies, you are not able to find the structure or not able to um, uh, this. Uh, um, uh, for, uh, do find the structure basically you are supposed to go for further studies of course yes uh, scanning limit is uh, there is one question from <clears throat> neera maiti scanning limit is 800 nanometer then why do you fix 540 nanometer yes ma'am all those scanning sir can i ask answer this question yeah please please yes uh, uh, 
so your question is scanning limit is 800 nanometer then why do you fix 540 nanometer see 540 nanometer is not fixed wavelength but it is a generalized wavelength at which maximum color compound show some absorption that is why we generally scan at 540 nanometer or 580 nanometer if your compound is <clears throat> showing suppose blue color then you can scan the wavelength at its complementary color wavelength say for example 600 nanometer it is not compulsory depending on the color of compound you have on your plate at white light you can choose the wavelength but 540 nanometer is the generalized wavelength which will show some some or the other absorption for all color compound that is why we recommend 540 nanometer generally uh, in higher range uh the image is not done but it depends if it is giving good result then why not yeah there are complementary color wavelengths tables yeah. available on internet they can refer the same for the colored compound which they are getting in their analysis Uh, yes, sir. One more question for synthetic compounds. Is it possible to develop and validate method using HPTLC? Yes, it is possible, yeah. sir, for the, there are many uh, methods or literature available for the method development and validation of synthetic compounds as well. Yes, it is definitely possible. Uh, HPTLC uh, is only for herbal or phytochemical compounds and it is synthetic. No, no, HPT, uh, this is the misconception that HPTLC <laughs> is suitable only for herbal compounds. It is suitable for many other compounds as well, cosmetics, uh, uh, organic chemicals, forensic samples, all, other, all the samples can be analyzed by HPTLC provided they are organic compounds which are non-volatile in nature. All these compounds can be analyzed by HPTLC. I think we are over with the questions. Okay. Yes, ma'am. There were quite a few questions. And yeah. if you have any other further questions, you can always write to us at lab at the rate and yes. yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. So thank you, sir. And thank you, ma'am, for answering these questions of participants. I'm sure they have uh, got uh, details on and answers to their queries. So yes. I would like to, on behalf of Ancrom Enterprises, we would yes. like to uh, express Gratitude to Dr. Amit Saraf, sir, to, to take out his time and explain us the strategies of phytochemical investigations. We are glad that he accepted our invitation and removed his time and delivered the lecture. The webinar covered topics right from the basics of chromatography to applications of HPTLC. This was an interacting session and uh, we hope that more such sessions will be conducted and the participants would be uh, interested in such sessions. And uh, these sessions are good for brainstorming and in future we would like to come up with more such sessions. So thank you, sir, for giving us this, uh, for giving us to brace, to giving us your time. And we would like to have more such collaborations with you. And uh, for the, Dr. Manju Shama, also thank you to answer all the qu uh, queries. And uh, lastly, I would like to inform all the participants that if you have any query related to HPTLC, please email us at lab at rate and And we'll also upload the lecture video on YouTube and send you the link. And yes, you can sir. go through it again if you have any queries. And uh, uh, we will provide certificates two weeks after today. So yes, sir, thank you again. Yes, Sankita, this is one of the best lecture in series and participants have definitely benefited, especially research group from this yes, session. More on Thank interactive you, lecture. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir, for giving your Thank valuable you. time and inputs for this session. We are looking forward for your support for future endeavors as well.
Sure, sure, madam. Thank you, thank you, thank you, team and from, and thank you all the participants for patiently listening. Yes.